right through May. Got one more weekend after this. Yeah. How wow. could that be? Wow. Oh, well, whatever time of year it is, it's always time to worship our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let's pray. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. You're our King of kings and Lord of lords. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You're our awesome God. You're our good, good Father. You love us with a love that we can't even understand. And nothing's greater than you. There's no mountain higher, no ocean deeper. Nothing is more powerful than you. And nothing is more gracious than you. And your love so irresistible. May the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable. You are Lord, our rock, our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, friends, we have the same memory verse, but this is a this is such a powerful memory verse. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. We're going to so, you know, a lot of times I do songs that have uh, that one word in all of them. Yeah. This is a little different. It's going to be the kind of the same thought. Right. I'll just give you a hint on this big word here, acknowledge him. And let's just talk a little about acknowledge. What do you think acknowledge means? Does that mean just say hi? Could it be act? No, not ac. No, it's not acim. Knowledge. It's ac It's it's really it's to acknowledge God who He is, how powerful God is, how loving He is, how how He His promises that He has that no matter what, even though we can't see it through His eyes, yes. His eyes are so powerful and that that He can see to the end. To the end. He was from the beginning to the end. So we need to acknowledge in all our ways that we do. We want to go at His ways. So, so we'll sing these songs, and you see how we can get that different bent on acknowledge him. Let's worship.
Mighty, mighty is our God. Mighty, mighty is our God. You are powerful and
Hi, boys and girls. I'm Teacher Rick, and I want to thank you for coming to another wonderful adventure in the story of God. So last week, kids, we talked about the judges. Do you remember that it was a bad time in the life of the, the Israelites, and they were yo-yoing back and forth between following God and not following God and following God. And every time they didn't follow God, he basically spanked them. There were consequences, just like you have good consequences, bad consequences. And so God would allow them to be conquered by people from outside the area. And just life became very hard. But why did he allow this to happen? Because he let them feel the consequences of them turning their back on God. Okay? Just like we will feel the consequences if we turn our back on God. Okay? God let them feel the consequences because they rejected him. Yeah, but God was faithful, and God kept sending people to unite them and to rescue them and to bring them back. You guys remember Deborah? We talked about her last week. And you remember Samson, the, the strong man, the mighty man? God sent them all to save the people of Israel. 
Today we're going to learn about a guy named Gideon. Yeah, I'm sure you've all heard the story, but we're going to learn about him. But before we do, let's pray and ask God to be part of our Bible study. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that these stories are here for us, that we can we can see how faithful you are, Lord, that we can see how trustworthy you are, and that even though there are consequences, Lord, you love us and you are with us. Doesn't mean we won't pay the price for our rebellion, but it means that you love us. So, Lord, help us to understand the story of Gideon, how, how you took a, a scared nobody and turned him into a mighty man. And, Lord, you can do that with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we ask you to be part of our study. We ask you to guide us, direct us, and your words to lead us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. So, before we start, let's look at our memory verse. All righty. Here's our memory verse. It's from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs was written by Solomon. King Solomon, the son of David. Remember, Solomon was the wisest man in the world. He asked God for wisdom and understanding, and God gave him a, a super dose of wisdom and understanding. So, Solomon wrote this psalm, or this proverb. And it says, In all your ways acknowledge him, meaning God, and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 6. So what does it mean? Does that mean that we're not going to have any curves anymore? We're not going to have any hills? Everything's going to be straight as an arrow? No, that's not what it means. See, the book of Proverbs means that these were things that Solomon wrote to help his sons live a better life. Okay? So what does the memory verse mean? In all your ways, meaning everything you do, whatever you do, everything, everything, acknowledge him means we're supposed to recognize the rights and authority of God, okay? Kids, you've never seen God, but you've read about him. You've heard about him. You know how faithful and long-suffering he is. Remembering that will help you live the right way. And when you do that, he'll make straight your paths. It means that we know God's on the throne, and we, may, and we know that no matter what happens, that he's got it. He's got it. Okay? It's not like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? No, God's got it. And he's in full control. And we just need to trust him. So what it's saying is, Proverbs 3, 6, In all your ways, whatever you do, remember who he is. And he will make straight your paths. He will make life more dedicated to him okay doesn't mean you're not going to have problems because that's jesus said in this world we will have tribulation but be of good cheer because he's overcome the world all righty so that's what that means so kids have you ever felt that god wanted you to do something but it seemed to be too hard for you to do how can i do that god i'm just a you know, I'm only 8, 9, 10 years old. I'm too little to do that. I, I can't talk well. I, I this, I that, I everything else. Okay? How about like getting along with our brother and sister? How about getting along with mom and dad? Our teachers, our grandparents. All right? Having the courage to tell somebody about Jesus. Your neighbor. You know that your neighbor doesn't know anything about Jesus. And you know that that neighbor is on a, a bad path. It's up to you to tell them about Jesus. Remember, kids, it's not your job to convince them. It's only your job to tell them. Okay? Good grades in school, obeying those in charge of us, all these things, sometimes they're a little too difficult. But if we ask God to give us the strength and the power to do it, he will. So today's word comes from, or message comes from God's word. The Bible comes from the Old Testament. The book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 1 through 24, and verses 33 through 40. Chapter 7, verse 1 through 23. Chapter 8, verse 10 through 33. Lots of verses. We're not going to read them all. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, we're not going to read them all. We will discuss them because God will boil them down for us. All right? 
So what was, why was this stuff happening? It says, you, what, Judges 6 1 tells us the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of Midian for seven years. Remember the, the worst phrase that was in the book of Judges is everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Never works out right. So they turned their back on God, they rebelled against God, and God gave them over to Midian, which was a nation beside the nation of Israel, for seven years. And they were mean to them and, and conquered them and stole their food and, and just on and on and on. So we have, our first is, we've got the Jews, the Israelites, hiding in caves. All right, they're threshing out wheat in caves. All right, so because the Midianites were ruling over Israel and they were taking everything they harvested. And the people had very little to eat, they were starving. So they threshed grain and in caves and in wine presses. Kids, when you thresh grain, you usually do it on a hilltop where there's a breeze blowing. So the chaff, you know, the junk from the, the grain flies off and you you get your clean grain there. There's no grain inside a, a wine press, okay, or inside a cave. But that's where, the only place they could do it because if they were out there in the open, the Midianites would come and steal their stuff from them, okay? The Jews were afraid of the Midianites. Because there were so many of them. The Bible says they were like the sands of the shore. All right. But in spite of the rebellion of the Jews, God loved them. And his heart was with them. Instead of allowing them to suffer the consequences of their turning away from God, he sent a judge to rescue them. Well, who's he going to send? We're going to find out. Did you kids know that Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now you ask yourself, well, everybody dies. What's this, you know, true. But did you know the Bible definition of death is eternal separation from God? Not just our bodies dying. I mean, they, we want them to go because they're full of sin and, and they, they get old and banged up and they're a mess. Okay. But the eternal separation from God is an, is, is an eternal thing and something we don't want to do. So kids, if the people of Israel had remembered the goodness and the faithfulness of God, they would not have turned away from him. They had history after history after history of God doing these amazing miracles. Some of them were still alive and, and, and remembered, but no, I don't think they were. Come think of it, they were probably all, all gone. And, and they didn't see it firsthand, so they didn't believe it, okay? So God sent his son to bring us freedom by going to the cross so we wouldn't have to. And he was bringing Gideon to bring freedom to the Jews. But, but, kids, both the Jews and us need to be willing to accept the gift. Jesus holds out the gift of salvation, but he won't make us take it. Okay, I can say, no, I won't do it. And guess what? With sadness, he'll watch me be eternally separated from him in a lake of fire. So the Jews had a choice of following Gideon or not. We have a choice of following Jesus or not. Remember our memory verse. And it helps us make better decisions. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. He will give you the wisdom to know which way to turn. Okay? He will give you the intelligence and the smarts to know this is not right. This is right. I shouldn't do this. I should do that. Okay? So, if the people of Israel had remembered the goodness and the faithfulness of God, they wouldn't have turned away from him, would they? They'd, they'd stayed faithful to him. They wouldn't have had to suffer the terrible consequences of their actions. But they didn't, and we don't, okay? So, threshing grain in the cave, scared of the Midianites, all right? All of a sudden, here comes the angel of the Lord. Whoa! The angel of the Lord shows up to Gideon, scares the pants right off of him all as well. He would if he was wearing pants. 
Judges 6, 1 through 11 and 12 tells us, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Oprah. The terebinth is a tree, which belonged to Joash the Abrazite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Was Gideon a mighty man of valor? He's hiding in a cave. Okay? He's scared to death of the Midianites. Okay? But see, the thing is, kids, God knows. God sees what we will be, not what we are right at the moment. So God sees that Gideon is going to be strong and faithful. God sees that you're going to be strong and faithful. God sees that you're going to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Okay? So the angel of the Lord tells Gideon that God's going to use him to do a mighty work. And he's going to use Gideon to beat the Midianites back and bring them and allow freedom again for the thing. Okay? So how would you like God to show up and tell you that he's with you? Wouldn't that be an awesome thing? Well, he does. He does. God tells us in his word, recorded by the Apostle John in John, 1 John 4.4. 4. It says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is with you is greater than he who is in the world. So kids, when you're thinking, oh, I can't do this because it's just too tough for me and, and, and they're too big and they're too mean. and The one inside of you is greater than the one in the world. Okay, When the contest finally comes Satan is going to be poof and he's going to be gone okay so the angel of the Lord tells Gideon that God's going to use him but Gideon's not so sure he's got a pretty low opinion of himself in his tribe because he's you know he just figures he's one of the weakest in, in the land <clears throat> but the Lord or the angel of the Lord tells Gideon that God is going to use him okay Gideon's not so sure, so he asked for a sign. They always ask for signs to, to verify that what was being said was true. <clears throat> Judges 6.23 tells us, Then the angel of the Lord reached out. Oh, he, here, let's back it up a little bit. Gideon asked him to stick around while he prepared a meal. And the angel of the Lord said, no problem. And so Gideon comes back with, with a cooked goat and, and some bread and, some, and a drink offering and whatnot. And then 6.23 tells us, And the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand, touched the meat and the unleavened cakes, and fire sprang from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. He rode the, rode the, fl the flames up into heaven. Whoa! Gideon's going, what? All right. So Gideon wasn't too sure that he could do what God wanted him to do. But he knew that God was with him because the angel of the Lord had proved it by telling him and then disappearing in the, in the clouds. Okay? The angel of the Lord showed that he was from God, but, but Gideon was still nervous. He's thinking, well, maybe God's got the wrong... Maybe there's another Gideon over in the other block that he was trying to get a hold of. So what should Gideon do? Gideon should be remembering something along the lines of our memory verse. Okay? Proverbs 3 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3 6. If Gideon had acknowledged the sovereignty and the faithfulness and loyalty of God, it would have been easy peasy. Gideon would have known, well, God's got my back. I'm good. Okay. All right. So, angel of the Lord is gone. The Midianite camp is just over the hill, and there are boatloads of Midianites there. Thousands and thousands and thousands. In fact, the Bible says it's like the, the sands on the shore. You ever try to count the grains of sand on the seashore? Impossible to do, isn't it? They were camped out and getting ready to attack the Israelites, okay? So Gideon goes and he makes him, so gets himself an army also, but nowhere like the, these guys had hundreds of thousands of people. They had Lots and lots. It was a way smaller army than what the Midianite army was. Okay, so he, he gets his army together and he gathers them and he tells them to wait. Okay, 
And then I can't get it, kids. I can't get it. All right. Remember the fleece? Remember fleece is just basically a sheep the sheep coat, okay, with the wool on it. But Gideon still wasn't sure about this thing, okay? Yes, he knew that God was with him, but he still wasn't fully convinced that God was going to bring him victory. So he prayed, asking God to give him a specific sign. He asked him, he put a skin of wool on the ground and asked God to make the fleece wet with dew and the ground dry. Now, kids, you've been you've gone outside in the morning and there's dew all over stuff, but you know what? They're, they're all wet, aren't they? Or there's no dew and they're all dry. But God did it. Gideon went out and rang out a bunch of water from the fleece, but the ground was dry. You'd figure that, Dad, okay, I got it, God. Thank you very much. But no, he asked for another sign. This time he says, God, he says, let the fleece be dry and the ground be wet. So the next morning he goes out and sure enough, the fleece is dry, the ground is wet. Two of them. Yet you, you think he's going to catch on right now? I sure hope so. Because, you know. So Gideon finally believed. Yay! Hallelujah. Gideon finally believed. Kind of like you and I, eh, kiddos? We know the wonderful faithfulness and loyalty and kind hearted and long suffering of God, but yet. We forget about it in a heartbeat, don't we? When we know it, in our knower, then we've got it. Okay? So isn't this a perfect picture of God's long-suffering and patience with Gideon? I mean, anybody else would say, you know what, Gideon, I'm sorry, you just, you won't get off, off the mark here, so we'll find somebody else. And it's the same thing when we question him and when we're slow to believe. God is faithful. God is long-suffering and patient. And he doesn't want anybody to, to miss out on a life eternal with him. Okay, so maybe Gideon, maybe Gideon should have remembered the memory verse. I'm going to try to be crazy with this memory verse. Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Now, if Gideon had remembered this, I'm granted, it wasn't written yet, but if Gideon remembered what he knows about God, he'd have gone, piece of cake, we got this in the bag. All right? So, huge Midianite army, all right? Here's kind of a picture, kids. Okay, this whole thing is the Midianite army, all this green. There's green under here, okay? So this gives you an idea how big the Midianite army was, okay? You see all the green here and goes through there. This whole page is Midianite army. And the Israeli army was this one, number one, okay? Look at the difference in size. But wait, there's more. So Gideon raises an army of 32,000 men. But God says it's too many. He says, because you guys will claim victory because you're so mighty. And God says it's a God thing. And I want you to understand and know that it's a God thing. So I'm going to make it so there's no way you can do it by yourself. So he basically tells Gideon to let anybody who's afraid go away. And 22,000, woof, they're gone. They go back home. So there's 10,000 men left, right? Okay. But God still says there's too many. What? There's hundreds of thousands of Midianites, but 10,000 is too many. So God tests him at, at a lake, basically a stream. And he tells Gideon that those who drink a certain way to send home and those who drink a different way stay. The ones who were sent home were the people that got on all fours and stuck their face in water, which means they weren't paying any attention to anything around them, okay? The ones who got on their knees and, and basically brought handfuls of water to their mouth while their eyes were moving around, those are the ones God kept. 
and there were 300 of them. Okay? So here's the Midianite army. Here's the Israeli army. And here's the Israeli army after the 22,000 leave. What's that right there? Oh my gosh, that's the 300 men that were left. Look at that. All that is Midianite army. And this is all you got, just these 300 guys right here. Is that going to be an amazing thing or what? But who's in charge? God's in charge. All right. So the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Remember, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He was asking God to take it away from him. But he said to me, God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In other words, kids, the weaker we are, the more God gives us supercharged powers through the Holy Spirit. Okay, the more cocky I am thinking I'm large in charge, the less the Holy Spirit's going to be able to do for me. But if I humbly admit that I can't do it, he takes over. I become, you know, like Superman. All right, so the people of Israel had no choice but to trust God and not themselves because there's only 300 of them against a couple hundred thousand Midianites. Okay, pretty scary, wasn't it? But Gideon was still afraid. Gideon was still not sure. And he didn't fully trust God. So God gave him another sign. God told Gideon to climb up to where the Midianite camp was and check out what he saw and heard. So Gideon went to the Midianite camp and he overheard the people talking about how afraid they were of Gideon and how, how God was, was sending him to, to destroy them. And they were scared. A couple hundred thousand army. And they were scared of Gideon and his army. All right proof to Gideon that, that God was fully in charge. And so Gideon goes back to the camp, and he's pretty supercharged now because now he knows for sure that, that victory is theirs. Okay? God can use me. God can use you. God can use me. He can use you. He can use someone in your family. God can use anybody who lets him do it. Okay? You, you're, you're never too weak. You're never too small. You're never too sick. You're never too this or too that. God can use me. God can use you. If you let him. You have to let him. Okay? <clears throat> so, God told his 300 men that this, this is it. They'd fight this huge number of troops, and, and evidently they believe Gideon, they believe God, because they were okay with that. Okay? So, you know, remember, God can use me. God was using Gideon and his men, and God can use you and I also. Ask him. He'll show you how to do it. All right? Remember our memory verse. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 6. Kids, if you remember who God is, if you remember who's on the throne, and no matter how tough stuff is around you, who's got your back? And if you remember that, you're going to be fine. Okay? The fiery darts will bounce off. Okay? You'll be okay. So Gideon's all pumped and he's ready to go. So he takes his men, his 300 men, and he <clears throat> puts them on the hill circling the Midianite camp. They got their lanterns. They didn't have flashlights. They had torches. And they had their torches in, in big vases like, you know, jars to keep the light out. Okay, but they were kept burning. So they all put the 300 men around, all around the camp. Okay, and uh, judges... 7, 19, and 20 tells us this. So Gideon and the hundred men, he divided into three camps of a hundred men. Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch when they had set the watch. So that would be at night. 
And they blew the trumpets and smashed the, the jars, which were in their hands. So now the torches are out, okay? Then the three companies blew the trumpet and broke the jars. They held in their left hand the torches in their right hand, the trumpets to blow. And they cried out a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. So all of a sudden, I got 300 torches ringing this camp where the Midianites were. And all and 300 trumpets, loud, lots of trumpets. In those days, it only took a couple of trumpets to muster an army. You know, So all of a sudden, you've got 300 trumpets blowing. And... Uh, the Midianite army thought there were just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of troops around them. And uh, what are we going to do? So Judges 7, 21 through 23 and 8, 10 tells us that the enemy soldiers thought that the Jews, the Israelites, were just, there were more than they could count. And, and they were and they were scared. And they started attacking each other in their fear of trying to get away. And basically, they pretty much wiped themselves out, okay, because Gideon didn't have to do anything. And, uh, and we read several times in the Bible about this happening. And so they took, took each other out, and then they started running. And that, you know, the 300 men started chasing them down and, and taking them out along the way, okay? was a great victory for Israel with 300 men. There was no way they could say, we did it on our own strength. Okay? But the conclusion was from Judges 8, 33 and 34, which was kind of sad. The people wholly followed God after that because, I mean, they just saw a mighty miracle. But you know, they stopped following him after a while. Judges 8, 33 and 34 tells us, as soon as Gideon died, because, you know, we all die of old age, the people of Israel turned again and followed the Baals and made, made Baal Berith their gods. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hand of their enemies on every side. Oh, kids, that is so sad. And boys and girls, before you go pointing fingers at, at the Israelites and, and going, we're not any better, okay? We forget so quickly the the wonderful things of God. Yeah, it's in the back of our head. Yeah, yeah, Jesus died for us and has got it. Yeah, yeah, gonna eternal life with him in heaven, got it. But we don't really remember the pain that he went through, the the price he paid for us, the love that he had for us. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. We're we're the same as them, so don't be ready to point fingers. So they stayed faithful as long as Gideon was alive because he kept reminding him. But once he was gone, they just drifted away, went back to their old ways. You'd think they'd have learned their history because time after time after time, it's the same thing over and over and over. Okay, but what we're doing is the same thing. We're just not worshiping stone idols. We're worshiping our Xboxes and our Playstations and our phones and our TVs and our computers. All right, we're worshiping stuff after stuff after stuff. Okay, kids, did you know that when your time on this world is over and you go to be with the Lord, if you've asked him to be your savior, there's no moving van hauling your stuff. Okay, the stuff stays. It's just you that goes. So don't spend so much time getting stuff. Spend time getting crowns in heaven from the Lord. All right. So Acts 10, 43 tells us, Apostle Paul tells us, to him all the apostles bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. So kids, ask God to show you the good works that he wants you to do. You're not here just to, to be fat and sassy and, and uh, eat ramen noodles and, and uh, drink energy drinks. God's got a plan for your life. You need to ask him what it is he wants you to do. Okay, because if there was no plan, if there was nothing for us to do, the minute we ask Christ to be our Lord and Savior, poof, we'd be out of here, right? We'd be up in heaven. But he's got a plan for you. Ask him what it is. And then 
he'll tell you, and then he'll give you the strength to do it through the Holy Spirit. When you believe that Jesus is the only way, and you ask him to be your Savior, you're instantly forgiven. There's no secret handshakes, magic dance, uh, big prize you got to find. Poof, instant. Jesus, I believe. Be my Lord and Savior. Whoosh. Saved. Sins are washed away. Saved with eternal life with him in heaven. Okay? What do you think about this, kids? Is there someone that you need to share Jesus with? Someone in your family? Someone in your neighborhood? What's the worst they're going to do? Yell at you and tell you to shut up? Big deal. All right? So you do, you shut up. But the point is, you planted the seed. That's all we got to do. If you plant a garden, if you've ever planted a plant, you put the seed in the ground and then you don't worry about it. God takes care of it. Okay? That's what you do in here. God will take care of it. So remember Gideon and his 300 men. How on earth are we going to take them out? And God delivered a mighty victory to them. Okay? But they had to step out in faith. They couldn't just sit back and suck their thumbs and think, you know, life is grand. Kids, we have to step out in faith, okay? We have to make a step too. We can't just sit back and wait for God to do these mighty things because he will do them if we step out. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this study, Lord. Thank you for the story of Gideon and your faithfulness to him. Lord, thank you for showing us that being afraid is, is normal and that we can be afraid but when we believe you when we believe all the things we've learned about you Lord that you will supercharge us with your Holy Spirit Lord help us to not shy away from the things you want us to do help us to not be afraid to step out in faith Lord help us to remember what you've done for us on the cross we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. All right, kiddos. God bless. We'll see you next week. Bye.